Borneo and Sumatra, tropical islands of epic proportions, wild and unpredictable, gigantic and majestic animals somehow thrive alongside each other, captured within a dense jungle. A unique playground for the mighty and the misfits. But around every corner, battles are fought. Twelve thousand years ago, during the last ice age, these islands were one landmass. As climates warmed, sea levels rose, and these separate fragments were formed. Borneo is the world's third largest island. Almost three quarters is Indonesian territory. The rest is split between Malaysia and Brunei. It is one of the most biodiverse places on Earth. Surrounded by rich waters, teeming with tropical life. Extensive mudflats and mangrove habitats fringe these coastal areas. But what dominates this island is almost 400,000 square kilometers of ancient rainforest. Monsters have been evolving and multiplying in these dark jungles. Where have they come from? And what has allowed so many to thrive in one place? There's a creature that seems perfectly suited to island life and is found only here in Borneo. Since being isolated from other monkeys in Asia, they've evolved a very odd body part. The male proboscis monkeys have the biggest noses of all primates. And the alpha has the largest by far. But it's more than just to attract the females. It's a trumpet. And he uses it to establish his authority. When one of your ladies starts eyeing a young intruder, you need to have a big voice to keep her in check. This roaming bachelor encourages her advances anyway, clearly upsetting the alpha. He retaliates by demonstrating his strength. and the young male soon retreats. Proboscis monkeys have been nicknamed the Dutchmen, and it's not just because of their large noses. They're also famous for their huge pot bellies. Their stomachs have evolved like fermentation tanks. Split into chambers and loaded with bacteria, they can digest even the most undesirable vegetation that would be poisonous to most other animals. A clever trick, as they can eat almost anything, and that's exactly what they do all day long. 
These successful monkeys live in large family groups, which definitely has its advantages. There's always someone there to help keep the bugs at bay. And the young have a choice of playmates on hand. But not everyone can join in. Newborn proboscis monkeys have bright blue faces, making them obvious to the rest of the group. Because it's not just their mothers that suckle and care for them, it's any adult female. But these faces aren't just a beacon to their family. Some monsters in this forest are silent stalkers. large round eyes, a heightened sense of smell, and perfect hearing. This beast is acutely aware of what the forest has on offer. The clouded leopard is a skilled, secretive, and stealthy predator. with an exceptionally long tail and flexible joints. They are masters of balance and can move silently through the dense canopy. But having a loud family has its benefits. With so many watchful eyes, and a sophisticated alarm call system, they quickly clear the danger zone. The defeated leopard disappears back into the shadows. At high tide, this habitat is a network of waterways cutting through the mangrove trees. These murky waters are an ideal hunting ground for a somewhat bizarre looking reptile. The soft-shelled turtle. Without the protection of a hard shell, he spends most of his time hidden under the sediment. All that is visible is his pig-like snout. Small but sharp eyes keep watch as fish flitter around, unaware of his presence. The cantors, or frog head, is a remarkable turtle. It's a staggering two meters in length. In complete contrast to its sluggish cousins, it's one of the fastest strikers on the planet, beating the cobra hands down. And it can deliver a bone-crushing bite. But another danger lurks in the water. The monkeys are faced with a dilemma. They need to cross this river to reach feeding grounds on the other side. Although they're excellent swimmers, the risk is just too high. Crocodiles kill more proboscis monkeys than any other predator. So it's time for a leap of faith. It's 
needs a precise calculation to see them across the infested water. One false move could be fatal. river debris. It's not always easy to judge the best route. just Borneo's coastal areas that are inundated with water. Many channels carve their way through this limestone landscape, absorbing nutrients as they go. Mineral streams are an important life source for another monster in the forest. These beautiful giants are Raja Brook's bird wings one of the largest butterflies in the world, easily spanning the size of your hand. These newly emerged males have gathered here to warm up their wings. is packed full of sodium and potassium, salts that are vital for their flight muscles to develop. This male can easily lap up many times his body weight in water. And the excess gets squirted straight out the other end. But it's time well spent. They're amongst the strongest flyers in the butterfly world. Once they take to flight, each butterfly will spend the majority of its life on the wing in his search for a mate. Borneo's rivers and streams are a lifeline for the island's residents, and this water can be traced back to its highest point, Mount Kinabalu. Lying on Borneo's Malaysian side, it towers above the swampy forests, but its presence influences the whole island. This huge granite plug pushed up through the surrounding rock 15 million years ago, and it's still growing. Rising half a centimeter a year, this colossal peak reaches over four kilometers into the air. Plentiful water, intense equatorial heat has created a jungle unrivaled in its richness. There's always abundant fresh vegetation for the forest residents to feed on. And they themselves play a key role in maintaining this abundance. Borneo's elephants are amongst the most important seed dispersers on the island. These herbivorous giants will hoover up over 100 kilos of vegetation each day, almost the weight of a newborn calf. And they aren't fussy eaters, consuming 162 different species of plant. Figs are also a tasty treat but nothing beats one freshly picked from the tree. It's lucky some of the other forest residents have a sharing streak. They might seem like giants. Actually, these pygmy elephants 
are the smallest elephants in the world, standing almost a meter shorter than their Asian cousins. And they're found only here, on the island of Borneo. Unlike other Asian elephants, these pygmies are a lot less aggressive, and they've got a comical, almost childlike look about them. Their faces are rounder, their ears are bigger, and their tails almost reach the ground. All of this feeding is thirsty work. A dip in the river proves irresistible. They can cool down. Quench their thirst. And even the mud has its benefits. Led by a matriarch, pygmy elephants have strong family bonds. And it's not surprising, as they can live up to 60 years in the wild. By 10 years of age, male pygmy elephants start to become sexually active. A mature bull has to reprimand this feisty youngster. When his back is turned, another young pretender tries his luck with the ladies. And he's very persistent. But it doesn't work out for him this time. In a few years, he'll mature and get pushed out of this herd to sow his seeds elsewhere. But for now, he has to toe the line. Monkeys and apes provide the soundtrack to these magical forests. And the steamy jungles of Borneo have a more unique variety than any other place on Earth. If monsters were defined by their size, there would be none greater than the orangutan, or man of the forest. The largest tree-dwelling mammal in the world. These apes are entirely designed for life in the trees. They travel through their canopy world alone, covering large distances to reap the rewards of the forest, feasting on fruit, leaves, and insects. These skilled climbers have arms that span two meters, and opposable thumbs on their hands and feet allow for an ideal swinging grip. They can travel as fast through the canopy as a man can run on the forest floor. Although there may be a few physical differences, they share 97% of our genes, and certain traits are uncannily familiar. The young 
spend the first nine years of life under the watchful eyes of their mothers. They cling on tightly to build their strength, the first stage of their canopy masterclass. As juveniles, they take their first solo steps, testing out their navigation skills and coordinating their sometimes clumsy climbing limbs. They have a lot to learn. What to eat and what not to eat. Orangutans used to be found across Southeast Asia. Today, these ancient forests of Borneo are one of their last refuges. The only other is a neighboring island, but over there, the forest floor is far from safe. 300 miles across the sea from Borneo lies the island of Sumatra. Like Borneo, it became separated as sea levels rose. Large animals became marooned, castaways from the Asian mainland. Constantly evolving, they developed unique adaptations to fit their island life. The Sumatran orang is a rare beast. Confined to the far north of this fertile volcanic island, they eke out a fragile existence and are quite different from their Bornean cousins. For one thing, even the largest of males prefer to stay up in the trees. Their hair is longer and brighter orange in color and they are much more sociable than their neighbors in Borneo, happily dining together in fruiting trees. Residing so far above the ground, it is vital to keep sure-footed at all times. A tumble from these heights can be fatal. But there's more danger than just the impact alone. The jungle floor is ruled by the king of this island, the Sumatran tiger. This lethal predator may be the smallest of the five surviving species of tiger, but it would make an easy meal of an orangutan. Whilst the orangs remain in the treetops, they're safe, but the eye of the tiger is ever watchful. All the forest delights, the orangutans here in Sumatra favor the durian fruit. It's packed with essential nutrients, but it's a little tricky to handle. This youngster watches his mother as she carefully locates a fracture line and skillfully prizes it open. It will take him years to master this art, but she makes sure there'll be plenty around when he does. The hard spiky shell presents a challenge to first timers. A classic schoolboy error. Unaware of the tiger's presence, this doting adult 
puts her life on the line. Luckily, this tiger has other things on her mind. She's one of only 400 Sumatran tigers clinging to existence, so she has to ensure her legacy lives on. And she's got three boisterous cubs to educate. These tigers hunt close to water. With darker and more densely packed stripes to other tigers, these hunters are perfectly camouflaged in the shadows. They wait for unsuspecting prey to come and drink, and then use their long rear legs to pounce out from the dense bushes. Play fighting with siblings is a good way to develop their hunting skills. For these cubs, getting used to the water is essential. But some are more keen than others. Starting a family is even more important for another Sumatran inhabitant. This somewhat prehistoric herbivore is a rare sight among these thickets. The Sumatran rhino. Of the five remaining species of rhino, they are the smallest and the hairiest. These solitary animals are inexhaustible walkers. But she's a creature of habit, always following the same circular path She'll cover 15 kilometers in a night in search of prime plants to feed on. This female has bigger worries on her mind. With only 200 left on this huge island, meeting a mate is like finding a needle in a haystack. So, she must find a way to advertise her presence. Any male in the area will now know she's here and available. Now she just has to sit and wait. And what better way to pass the time than a full body mud bath? Finding a mate in this vast forest can be a tough task for the Sumatran rhino. But back in the forests of Borneo, the King Cobra faces the opposite problem. Because males seek out only the largest females, as it's their young that have a greater chance of surviving to adulthood. Rivals often come head to head. A fight is inevitable. These two males are immune to one another's venom. So this is a contest of sheer strength. Some fights in this kingdom of monsters are vicious. But with this slick serpent, it's more of a hypnotic dance. for throne has been won. The defeated snake retreats. The victor claims his territory, a 
and wins access to the females within it. These mystical forests and the monsters within are the source of many myths and legends. But it is the sun that has the strongest presence in Indonesian mythology. Its ability to descend into the underworld without dying and return each morning has been the inspiration for the name given to one of the forest residents. This is the smallest of all bears. Standing at just 70 centimeters, they barely reach your knees. Small, yet far from graceful. With their inward pointing feet, they look like misfits on the forest floor. Legend has christened them the sun bear. Their distinct markings resemble the golden orb that rises over the forest each morning. Like the rest of his bear cousins, this cumbersome male is led by his nose. Fixed on a scent, and with his sickle-like claws at the ready, he sniffs out a tasty treat, but often gets distracted. Eventually, the nose of this honey monster does guide him to treasure. Using his claws to strip the bark, he gets access to the sweet, sugary sap inside and the many insects that call this place home. Rivaling the Amazon in its productivity, Borneo's trees grow incredibly fast. As a result, these lowland jungles house the world's tallest rainforest trees, almost as tall as the Statue of Liberty towering 80 meters and upwards. This secret high-rise world contains multiple layers of life. But with over 30 meters to the lowest branches, the fresh leaf growth on most of these trees is a long way from ground level. In this plentiful forest, there's always a tree and fruit, but it takes an experienced nose to find the best one to exploit. And he's off. With his claws wrapped around the trunk and hairless soles to maximize his grip, he makes light work of the towering climb. Sun bears spend more time in the canopy than any other bears in the world enjoying the delicious fruits of these magnificent trees. This giant's branches also provide an ideal perch for a monster on the wing. Borneo is home to eight species of hornbills, the largest and noisiest of all birds in Indonesia. A unique feature of these winged giants is the cask, a hollow structure that runs along the upper part of the beak. Reinforcing their huge bills and acting as a resonating chamber for their calls. As its name suggests, the rhinoceros hornbill has the biggest of them all. Their oversized bill is an ideal tool for many things but not so much when it comes to feeding. They can pluck figs from the tree with enormous precision, 
but getting them down the hatch is a skill that comes with practice. These ancient trees are essential to sustain life high up in the canopy, and they even go on giving after they die. Often being hollowed out by termites in their old age, these giants can't be supported by their shallow roots. Eventually, they come crashing to the ground and form an extra dimension to the forest floor. In the damp of the jungle, a fallen tree soon begins to decay. It is then host to a variety of bugs. And this is where his keen sense of smell once again guides the sun bear to the hidden treasure. Using his powerful claws, his 30 centimeter long tongue, and the strongest canines in the bear family, he can prise open even the toughest of ironwood trunks. His reward? A bounty of tantalizing termites. Insects make up a large portion of his diet, and he feasts on over a hundred different species. But some are harder to get than others. The jungle canopy may be home to the obvious giants, yet the forest floor is the territory of the real monsters on these islands and can provide the secret to the forest's formation. Dark, damp and eerie, the unknown linger in the shadows. More than three quarters of the animals here are insects. It's a world where appearances are deceptive. What may seem to be a giant can be misleading. Giant millipedes have existed on the Earth for over 400 million years and are the key recycling agents in the leaf litter. 100,000 different species of insects are packed into this jungle. Battles are commonplace here. You need to be specialized to survive. Camouflage is one option. The dead leaf mantis, perfectly disguised to blend in with its leaf litter surroundings. This monster can ambush insect prey whilst being undetected by its predators. But there is danger much closer to home. These beasts are highly territorial. Wandering into another mantis's lair can only spell trouble. It's a battle of poses to begin with. They size each other up. certain death. Seeing the opportunity in every kill, the victor eats his reward. Cannibalism is common here, and nothing goes to waste. The smell of death travels far in this underworld. He unwittingly shares his prize. Peace 
by piece, it is dismantled. Ants play a critical role in this forest ecosystem. Recycling dead organic matter, they feed nutrients back into the soil. The corpse flower, or Aflesia, lives in Borneo and Sumatra. Cabbage-like growths parasitize the jungle's vines. After nine months, and only when it's ready to reproduce, it opens to reveal a massive five-petaled flower. Its appearance and odor mimic rotting flesh, tricking passers-by into believing it's a meal worth pursuing. It's the largest single flower on Earth, spanning a meter across and weighing up to 10 kilos. And to further trump that flower, nighttime reveals a more sinister trick. A heat-sensitive camera reveals an object that steadily heats up to 10 degrees hotter than the surroundings. It's the flower of the elephant yam. Not only reeking of rotting flesh, it has further evolved to mimic the warmth of a dying animal. The heat also lifts the odor up into the forest air, increasing the flower's chance of attracting carrion beetles. And when they arrive, they are captured. The waxy walls ensure the beetles cannot escape, but tumble straight into the center of the monster flower. On the second night, a rain shower of pollen occurs within the flower, coating the beetles below. They've paid their dues and are now free to go. Miraculously, the inner walls of the flower change texture, inviting the beetles to climb to freedom and spread the pollen. This incredible tactic is just one of many evolutionary masterstrokes that keep the islands of Borneo and Sumatra regenerating. These plants and animals have developed unique adaptations to island life. The monsters have become mini, and the small have supersized, each one claiming their own realm. The forests owe their wealth to the actions of their residents. In this well-oiled machine, nothing goes to waste. The cyclical nature of the animals' lives echoes the ebb and flow of the island's habitats. After thousands of years, a delicate balance has been struck, ensuring success for both the islands and their inhabitants for many years to come.